to another episode of Two Fat Guys Talking Flowers, where we're always going to give you the good, the bad, not so much ugly, about flowers. I'm Fern, here with Joel. Joel's back. Ryan was lost last week. Thank God Joel's back. We got through just fine. Perfectly fine. Don't There'll listen. be a lot of edits from last week. Ryan is in the house. Mimi is in the house. Yay. And for the final, final <laughs> time, the final time, Sid, Sid and Mike are both here in-house they will be going to jeff fresh north country very soon but he's still here and sid is with us today so this is our last podcast till what thanksgiving that's right then mike won't be here after summer but but we're gonna you know mimi's been lining up all the guests so we're gonna go with Mm. another heavy heavy hitter our good friend our innovative our super hardworking and I don't know how he doesn't eat the house from where he lives. <laughs> uh, guest is none other than Marco Grootman, CEO. No. What? Yeah. What? No, what? no, no. Sorry. Why'd you stop me? It's just Groot. Is it Groot? Yeah. It's not Groot. He called me Groot, man. He said Groot, man. I am Groot. Groot it's man, Groot. What's up? Michael it's Groot. Just, hold on, hold on. I wrote it on the page. <laughs> You guys just fucking with me at this point. You just no, fucking with me. This is this is <laughs> this is she's great just stuff for the podcast. I swear. Okay, so everybody knows. There's no we, man on that paper. We record. <laughs> there's no. This is just Groot. I, yeah. Groot. I, there's I, something I, with you people. You waste money on so many things except notepads. They have the, everything goes on a small post-it <laughs> note. That's how we run this business. Okay, in Fern's defense, as the, as the company's um, you know, public defender, I usually send I get, a bunch of I, notes and I didn't send notes today. I, so. I almost wah, never get wah, defended. Wah. I love no, this. No, you need to add in the, the people's court sound effect. Dun, dun, dun. That's what you need to add to your list. <laughs> but we're going to try this again. Our awesome, innovative, great friend. I don't know how he doesn't eat the house down from where he lives above a bakery. Guest is none other than Marco Group. CEO Hilverda DeVore. Woo! USA. Love that. I got through Thank it. You. I got through Thank it. Thank you. What, what a nice introduction. Uh, well, since you got my name wrong, I'll, I'll challenge you a little bit, uh, Fern. Look up what Groot means in Dutch. Maybe Mike knows, as he is like half a Dutch man. That I don't oh, know. The Googles are coming what out, I see. What does Groot mean in Dutch? Does it mean tree? It's what do you think when you think of Dutch people besides tulips? Tall. Tall people, yeah. I'm I'm small compared to most of the Dutch people that you guys see. What does that mean? What are you? Six what? Yeah, just six one. Six one. Just <laughs> yeah. just six one. I'm barely it tra- five it feet. It translated it. My phone hates me. It what does it say? What does it mean? No, no, no. It doesn't say. It just translates. It's big. Oh, it means big. Yeah. You want me to give it away? Yeah. Big. Giant. It means big. Yeah. 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 <laughs> big Marco. Anyway. I'll talk. That's I'll, a hat. Hold on. How tall are you, Marco? Six one. Just said six one. Six one. So has that movie I was ruined your life, or, or is it more God. fun? No, it's more fun. Okay. Every every hotel that I check into, everybody tries to be original. I am Groot. I am Groot. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I, I my middle name is hey, Scott, said, so everybody plays around with my name because of the office guy, Michael Scott. Michael Scott. <laughs> Michael Scott. It got me out of a speeding ticket once. And this really, really attractive uh, TSA agent asked me if I'm from the office. The flower office. They're, re- they're, re- they're re- rebooting it. Flower they're office. Are they? We, yeah. are, we are like the flower office. So, yeah. Speaking of offices, Marcus, Marco's on Zoom. And I'm looking at you have some records. You have some LP records over there. What are you listening oh, to? He's got a record yeah. player and all. Yeah. There. I like that. Record player and all. You got so, the vinyl. Um the vinyl, the classic ones, we have a record store pretty close by, and you can buy for like two dollars, four dollars, six dollars, you know, whatever record you want. And uh, yeah, I happen to like jazz, I am uh, a little bit of an old soul that way, but I got like all this Sinatras, all the count bases, and all of that stuff. What, uh, what's on the player right now? What was the last thing you're playing? Right now. Get closer to the mics. So right now we got Frank Sinatra going. Oh, Hell yeah! Oh shit! Hell yeah! Smooth. We have Smooth. we I have like Saturdays with Sinatra here. Every Saturday we play the uh, the Rat Pack. 
Michael Bublé or Frank Sinatra. That's the music we play here in the office on Saturdays. Oh, you guys do that? Yeah. 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 We have Latin Fridays, White Boy Wednesday. (laughs) Fiesta Friday. (laughs) Yeah. What is White Boy Thursday? Country music. White Boy Wednesday. It's country country music. music. It's country music, you know. It's the slowest sales day of the week. Yeah. No, ironically. No, it's not. (laughs) I wonder why. It's the same lyrics from a hundred different songs. It's all about I'm at the bar and I got drunk and I fell in love. It's the same thing. Don't my touch truck my truck. Down. My truck in blue jeans. Yeah, it's the same thing. Over <laughs> Whiskey, and over. bourbon. We yeah. can all tell who doesn't like the country music. And then they put Go the ahead. Beyonce country music on and then Pockets doesn't like that. Yeah. So I don't know. It's not we, real country. Uh, that's a big no, no. We played that. We played that the other day like four times in a row. I just kept repeating yeah. the song for Pockets. Um, speaking of places and offices, Marco. Tell our listeners where your office is located. So, so my office is located in Connecticut. Um, I, it could be anywhere, you know, just like you guys. Like you can work for anywhere if you if you want to. But when I moved here, you know, a tr- trillion years ago, um, I was thinking like like where do we want to go? And Boston was for us, you know, really important as a city. But so was New York City at the time, and we diversified after that. But at that time, it was. Really, New York, Chicago, and Boston. And I thought if I live in between New York and Boston, it'll be good enough. Yeah. Lo and behold, I had no clue about taxes and things like that. But Connecticut is uh, is a beautiful state. I will tell you that it's uh, it's very green. It's it's, un- it's like what Connecticut's you have underrated. New York. Connecticut's underrated. Isn't Connecticut really is. where all the everybody goes to see the leaves turn and yeah, 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 yeah. Except for and, Mike. Uh, Mike, so you're back right be- No, you're going to go back at, thanks- at Thanksgiving, right? Yeah, I, we get to see the so, leaves changing. Yeah. Yeah, so you stay until then, correct? When when we leave, the leaves have already fallen. We leave like a week yeah. before Thanksgiving. The leaves have already fallen down. It gets kind of cold by that time. <laughs> but it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Um, I start driving tomorrow at 5 a.m. The palm trees don't turn the nicest of colors what down you, here I'll what do you by. listen to on, on the ride up let me tell you the, the before i tell you that when we first moved here marco you'd appreciate this the landscaping is poinsettias like the your hedges are poinsettias and the only thing they decorate is palm trees with lights and stuff it's not very good i don't like it i don't like that i get that I get that. You don't get an yeah, autumn wait vibe a second. or a winter vibe. So you basically vibe down wait. Here. That's not I true. I bet you at Marco's house, he's got lilac growing. He's got. He's probably got all kinds of cool stuff growing around Hydrangea. his house. Hydrate, yeah. He's yeah, Fiberna, all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, tr- peonies, a lot of peonies. But uh, so hey, you're... guys, can I ask you guys a question? Go ahead. Because the. Uh, 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 Mike, first time we spoke, this is years ago, right? And uh, uh, I called you out of the blue. We didn't know each other. We knew of each other. And I called you because I, uh, you know, you guys are social media or something else, like really something else. And I saw a uh, a clip and I believe it was Fern. And uh, it was introducing roses and there was like this disco ball and it was glitters. There was a cowbell and it was like a siren noise. New variety. Awesome. New, yeah, variety, new variety, new yeah, variety yeah. alert. It was awesome, and and then I looked at your website, and and everybody has like their equivalent of the name in Spanish. Like, there's a lot of humor in it, but at the same time, it's very professional. So so it goes hand in hand. So anyway, I called up Mike and I said, "Listen," or I emailed you, and uh, you don't know me, but I I'm a big admirer of you guys. Uh, what you guys do on social media, and uh, uh, ever since we stayed in touch, but. You guys have such a fun culture in your company. Like, is that by design at the beginning, or did it just click with all of those people that you have? Like, how did that happen? Michael Mike? Black. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, Black. I would say it's half intentional and half coincidental. I think it's a mixture of both. I mean, no one could think of all the shit that goes on here. Uh, but Nor- Mike, but- Mike is um, like the fiddler on the roof. He is matchmaker, matchmaker, make me. He knows how to match up people and and pick people that are going to work together. I think that's. I just. I believe that. I spent two years working for a corporate company in New York before I moved to Miami, and I 
wanted to do when I when I decided to create Jeff Fresh, I didn't have any idea what was going to happen. I thought it was just going to be me flying solo, and then just things just started to gel. But when we really started to realize that this could be a thing, um, I set out to do everything that that big corporation didn't do. You know, everything that you know, just. I want my people to come to work. They spend people spend more time at work they do it with their families. Mm-hmm. They want more time in the office than they do with their families. They gotta have a fucking good time. They can't be miserable always. I mean, look, there's always those days where everything's not good and people are bitchy in a bad mood or whatever and the things aren't as exciting as what they or as fun as what it should be. But I like to make the majority of it. You know, dealing with this stress for Flower Company, this didn't come in. This flight was canceled. That airway bill was changed. FedEx lost these boxes. This didn't show up. This customer's mad. That that supplier is pissed off because his flowers were on hold. It's just, it's always something. And I guess wanting to make it fun and like I wanted to make it like everyone's bedroom, like everyone's home. Hey, no. You know? I was like, what? You gotta Depends be careful when you use bedroom <laughs> you know or what I mean. sales like, people. You know, That's what she said. Nah, I want people to decorate their <laughs> shit the way they like it. And, like, we don't have <clears throat> quiet. Fern was telling me a story when he was working in another company that the boss would not even, like, acknowledge the people on a daily basis. Like, just walk right past them. And that can't be very motivating. It's not. It's not. That's someone, not someone That's will not come. I... Someone will come to visit, and you know they just they walk right by everybody. Like you know, don't ignore these people here. Come to yeah. my office. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, half on purpose, half little... on coincidence. That's how I would answer that question. Uh, uh, whatever it works well, for us, it's it's on the unorthodox. We probably do it. I have to say, you guys are really brilliant when it comes to, uh, you know, being original. That, that's number one, being original, you know, being funny and, and have a good time doing it, but also very serious in business. Like if I walk into you guys cooler, you guys have good flowers. Like your flowers are high quality. Like you guys do a serious job. And um, wow, thank you. And at the same thank time, you. have fun doing it. And that's that's really cool. Well, we had the pleasure of kissing a whole lot of frogs to find the princes. A lot <laughs> of frogs. Yeah. yeah. Didn't we all? But likewise, I mean, you 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 provide a service that uh not many people can can do and you you have also, from what I know, great suppliers and a great network um from starting at the mothership in Holland and going all different places. So, I mean, I know you have your South American business, you have your Miami business, you're, so why, you're everywhere. Yeah, why don't we explain yeah, let's explain his it. business first before we get into a story. Let's let's talk about what the current, right? Or yeah, no? what the current sure. business is. What is uh who is Hilver the I know that name. Sure. I know that name since I'm sixteen years old. Let's say the name out loud real quick. Say the name. Hilverda yeah. de Boer. Go ahead. Hilverda de Boer. And that's Joel? good. I just wanted Joel to say it, that's all. Hilverda de Boer. It used to be R de Boer at one point. It, right, it used to be Artibor yeah. and Hilverda. I remember Huggy you know, Bear used to work. Does Huggy Bear still work for you, Alex Costa? No, 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 no. Huggy Bear was that his name? I used to call him Huggy Bear. Yeah, <laughs> like from Starsky and oh, Hutch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Except he was just like a big giant Huggy Huggy Bear. Uh, okay. Yeah, nicest, sweetest yeah, guy. Very ever. nice guy. But if you pissed him off, you better run because that guy was big, <laughs> strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't talked to him in yeah, years. Yeah. I hope you're doing he's good, nice Huggy I don't Bear. Think he's in the, I don't think he's in the flower business anymore, to he'll, be honest. He'll outlive us all. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. The stress <laughs> from sure. the flower business takes years out of your life. It's uh, it's true. Now, what we do is we, uh, uh, so, so you know, we're colleagues in the industry. We uh, we serve the, 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 the higher end florists, the event planners, the wedding and event planners. Um, and we do that in uh, uh, with five main ports in the United States. We bring it to Miami, Chicago, Los Angeles, Dallas, and New York. And from there on, we, you know, distribute wherever it needs to go and whatever makes most sense. Um, we sell mostly through our web shop. Um, we get flowers in from, from Italy, from Japan, New Zealand, 
um, from Italy, Holland, obviously, South America. Um, and all of those offers are online. And we have a sales team. Well, sales team is not really the right word. It's more like account managers because these days, what we do is logistically quite, uh, you know, it can be quite complicated. And they're all, you know, experts in what they do. And and so it's not like, hey, they pick up the phone. Do you want to buy a box of whatever carnations or, or, or pom-poms? Like, that's not what we do. But our, our, you know, colleagues are really account managers. They help from A to Z, the customers getting the flowers there, uh, making sure they make the right choices for, you know, weddings and colors and seasons and all of that good stuff. Um, so very experienced sales staff. And uh, and a fun fact, by the way, because you mentioned that uh, you knew uh, our company since nineteen since the sixties. In uh, no, since uh, I'm sixteen, I guess, I guess that's the. 70s. Oh, since you were sixteen. Oh, that's the yeah. sixty. No, I remember okay. my dad. I remember my dad bitching. This fucking Hilverda de Boer is sending Dutch flowers directly to my customer, and blah 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 blah. So I remember that whole conversation. I remember that like it was yesterday, and I think that was so futuristic because. At that time, nobody was barely bringing in Dutch flowers to the United States. It was like just beginning to be a thing. And uh, they were already doing it. I don't know it was going, I think it was more local and regional at that point. I don't know if you really were doing all this FedExing stuff. But I think, I don't even think there was FedEx then. I think it was like Flying Tigers and those old... Don't look at me. Flying Tigers was the was the original cargo. You mean you mean area. FedEx isn't like the original cargo? No, team? FedEx bought out Flying Tigers. Oh shit! Flying Tigers was a cargo airline for overnight shipping and stuff. We used to fly the flowers from Miami to New York on Flying Tigers, and I used to pick up there Flying Tigers. Was yeah. it that FedEx that he started with his business idea that he he needed money? I don't know, but I know it was money? Flying Tigers one day and FedEx the next. That's all I know. I, yeah, well, I we'll have so to the guy research from FedEx that. Had, no, but the guy from FedEx had this brilliant idea, and he was in school, and his uh, business teacher said, well, that's never going to work. Well, obviously, I don't know, 50 years later, definitely worked. But at some point, he was out of money, and I'm just saying something. He needed you know, 50000 to get started, and he had all of his savings, and he put it on red or black. And, uh, and you know, it was either that or, you know, or nothing. And he won, and he started FedEx. Fuck yeah. It's Holy just shit, all in. how life goes. FedEx purchased Flying Tiger Cargo um, in 1988. Wow. Mm -hmm. so I don't know. I just feel flying. like everything I can remember in every movie was FedEx or UPS. Yeah, that's before your time. Yeah. Federal Express. So when did Hilverde de Vore begin shipping into the U.S.? What year was that? Great question. <laughs> it's also a bad interviews. Great question. No, no, this is actually, uh, this is funny. In uh, 1923. Shit. Um, Holy shit. Hilverda was the, seriously, was the first to ship lilac, well, to ship flowers to the States, you know, to begin with, but on a cruise ship, and I have the name somewhere. I just don't have it, like, like really ready. But on a cruise ship, wherever, like, in the kitchen, in the pantry, they had lilac for the hotels in New York. They sold it to the hotels in New York in 1923. They did it a couple of times. And then um, the UZA back then was already difficult. And they banned, you know, flowers from whatever outside of the United States. And then I believe in 1935, they allowed it again and we continued. So really last year was our 100th anniversary, if you could say it like wow. that, of shipping to the United States. Very cool. And uh, but since since 1983, we have really an office in the states and people and et cetera, et cetera. So 1983 is really when we, you know, took it very seriously, uh, our American entity, so to speak. Yeah, I remember that. But you guys took it to a whole nother level now, and you're you're owned by a bigger company, right? Yeah. So we uh, we merged about a year and a half ago with uh, Fleur Metz Group. And uh, and that was a, quite an interesting move uh, on many levels because, you know, we are next door in Holland and, you know, you guys all have been to Holland several times. That's a big deal. Logistical wise, that's a big deal that you're next to each other. Those two massive companies, 
we were more or less with the same systems and this and that. And it, it really felt like after a couple of conversations that it, it, it fitted like a glove and we were really complementing each other, uh, so to speak, and uh, completing each other, so to speak. And uh, uh, so, yeah, the merge happened. And right now we're working on the back end, you know, where we can get some synergy. But the companies itself stay all separately. But on the back end, you know, we, we combine our freight. Uh, we can make deals with farms, you know, uh, uh, all over the world. We have more buying power, uh, IT, marketing, all those kind of things is easier to do on a bigger scale on the back end. But the companies itself with the clientele and with, you know, the employees and things like that, that will all stay separately. Okay, Florida Mets has like brick and mortar locations. Yeah. Right? Yeah. In so North that America. Helps you too, right? Oh, 100%. You could drop so ship in, through in them. North well, in North America, they uh, they have seven, five in the United States. Um, uh, we have a company called Pinnacle, which is closed by you guys. Uh, does a little bit the same as Hilfra de Boer, eh? drop ships to customers. And then we have Anton Spargaren, which is a uh, yeah more of a, a wholesale label. Um, uh, so between the four labels, we uh, yeah we have quite a big share of the market. Definitely. And, and it's interesting just to see like how can we how can we work together without yeah, without jeopardizing what everybody's good at. You know what I mean? Like like we're good at certain things, Pinnacle is good at certain things. You don't want to take that away from from the companies because then you know you make yourself weaker. The, the, the real challenge is to do it the other way around. How can we be stronger? Exactly, man. That's really cool. That's really awesome. Um, I didn't realize all those companies were under one roof, basically, on one umbrella. But really cool, the the synergy you guys are having in Holland. I think that's awesome. And you're right, having both those buildings already being next to each other, what a great coincidence for a buy. Yeah, and also, both are really uh, family-driven companies. So uh, uh, Hilverda de Boer, although it's a merge, but Hilverda and de Boer, Art of Book were really truly family companies. The generations worked, you know, uh, dads are packing the flowers with their with their sons and daughters or moms. Um, and the same thing goes for Fleur Metz. So it, the, the the values of the two company all also helps in order to make it a success. If you merge with a company that has complete different values, you know, it's it's gonna work for a year, but that's it. You know, you have to you have to find something that everybody feels excited about yeah. and and you know uh if you guys merge with uh i'm not, not going to name names but you guys are very specific in how you are you know so if you ever merge or if you ever you know want to do something on that that front you want to look at a company that has the same values the same habits the same humor almost yeah yeah no no merging no <laughs> so marco we got to get into you though we got to know you got to tell the listeners where you came from how you got started uh in the floor industry yeah well like like all you know dutchies uh you know you grow I up like there, that name again, dutchies. You guys have been there. yeah you guys have been there multiple times so you know how it works like you're I don't know. You're you're five six years old. You start to work on uh, on the farm. My uh, my grandfather was a, a bulb farmer, lilies, tulips, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And back in the day, by the way, uh, my mom uh, uh, watched you the other the other week. I I turned fifty the other week, so she was here for those you know for, for my birthday. And but we started to talk, and uh, she brought a little booklet. And you can see my grandfather and my my uncles working on the fields in the. 40s, end of the 40s, early 50s, uh, with ranunculus and this and that. But she told me, like, you know, back in the day, you get paid twice a year. So you were producing all year your bulbs and your flowers, but you only got paid twice a year. So it was really a long stretch, and it was waiting till, you know, April 15th, which is tax day here. But anyway, it was payday there. Uh, and how times have changed, right? But anyway, uh, uh, so yeah, I worked on, uh, I was used to working on the farm and this and that, weeding, uh, uh, beheading the tulips. I'm sure you guys saw those uh, those videos. That's what we do to make the bulb grow, right? Uh, I like reading the comments like on those murder. videos. 
Like you write it in the <laughs> yes. captions. You write it specifically. Like we say why we're doing it, but people in the comments yeah. still don't get it. Like, oh, why are you doing that? What a waste. Yeah. It, the internet is undefeated. Yeah. The internet will not lose. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like you murder somebody, right? right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but anyway, you know, got started like that. Um, and, and my life changed when I was 15. So, so my best friend, um, his aunt married an American soldier. And uh, they moved to the United States in California, Novato. And he said, uh, one summer, do you want to visit my aunt? I said, yeah, absolutely. So we worked the whole summer on the field, blah, 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 to get the tickets. But she married a couple of times. And every time the guy was a little wealthier. <laughs> and so my That's first... My my first uh, experience in the United States was being at their house and the next door neighbor was George Lucas. So that tells you a little bit of like how they lived. And, you know, I listen, I come from no means at all. So, so being there was like, I thought all of America was like that. So, (laughs) so I made my mind up and said, this is it. I'm going to move to the United States, but I was 15. So I finished my school. I, uh, I studied horticulture. And uh, I got a scholarship for the North Carolina State University. Nice. Also horticulture and economics. Anyway, long story short, did that, went back to Holland, and I worked at a flower wholesale. For, from, for, uh, a friend of mine owned it. And I liked it so much that I kind of stuck around. And I want to go back to the States, but I loved working uh, uh, just in the flower wholesale. And I was driving a little truck. Me too. And I was going to all the... I love that. Yeah, you did that too, right? Oh, yeah. I, love... I still try to do it. <laughs> yeah what did you I love about it i always enjoyed that i i re- remember that one time i drove uh i drove to a customer and she said uh, she walked out the store and she had an uh she had a uh, how do you call that uh, a trainee with her and the trainee was like you know to train to be a, a floral designer and uh so i opened the van and you see all of the flowers there and she picked up some chrysanthemums so i I took them from the truck. I gave it to the trainee. And the lady said to the trainee, please cut them and put them in water. So anyway, I was writing up my bill. Everything was by hand back then, right? And I walk inside. And I see the poor girl. She cut the top off and put the top in the water. Like, oh, you don't expect those kind of things, right? From people God. that have flowers. But anyway, yeah. But, but that's kind of the fun thing. When, you, when you're on the road, you see your customers every day. You know, you, you just have a good time and you sell a lot of flowers and uh, didn't get any better than that. But at some point I wanted more. And uh, uh, I started in Anton Spa Garden and they didn't have any uh, uh, department to ship to the United States. So I learned how to do that. You know, how it works with boxes, volume, like, you know, Mike, you know all of this, but I didn't back then. And, uh, and I set it up from scratch there and yeah, from there, 25 years later, I'm here. And in the meantime, I got transferred internally. Hilfra de Boer bought into Spargar and also Gazelle years ago. But now I'm here. So it's, uh, but it's been a good ride. That's awesome. So wait a second, wait a second. So you were in Anton 25 years ago and you started, yeah. you started and you set up the shipping, which is difficult in itself because you learned, you had to learn kilos, you had to learn weight, you had to learn do's and don'ts because there's several products that you're not allowed to export to the u.s did you learn those the hard way or was there like a list to help you out no the hard way but listen as as in life you have to have luck right like it's with everything so uh i I remember one day so so my first day i walk in and listen i knew the auction from always growing up bringing the flowers to the auction like i i knew the flower world and this and that just not particularly shipping with air so the first day I walk into the office and, and and the box sheriff, as we call them, like the box manager, the the the, the floor manager, came up to me and uh, and we had a cup of coffee and he explained to me about the size of the boxes and I kind of figured it out pretty you know pretty quickly. You know, in your flowers, you know how much you know how many stems in a box and I'm sure it wasn't perfect, but it was good enough. But I start sending out like a price list and then one day I get a phone call to the office and I just happened to pick it up and it was Dutch Flower Line. And Dutch Flower Line is a uh, is a very successful wholesaler in the United States, and he said, "Yeah, I just happened to, you know, somebody mentioned your name or something, and uh, can you do a shipment?" And that's how I got started with Dutch Flower Line, and then from there on, I picked up more customers, etc., etc., etc. But you gotta have some luck. 
You know, if he didn't make that phone call at that time, it would have been a lot harder. Exactly. Luck is uh, luck plays a part. It can't be everything, but it is. Uh, it's pretty cool when luck hits on the head, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So then, you were were you selling at this point, or were you just in charge of logistics? No, I was selling. Yeah, yeah, and and basically, I was the only one doing it because the company itself was more geared towards uh, towards Europe and towards Japan. So base, yeah, basically, I came in in the morning, make sure that my orders, you know, went out to the buyers and and and, and were packed properly and this and that. And then at night, I would do the sales. And then the next day, you know, your alarm clock goes at three or three thirty. It's uh, it was grinding, but it was it was good. And uh, and I think it was the best learning school I could ever had. And when I left Spa Garden, you know, the whole department kind of you know faded away and. Honestly, I still have customers because I went to Hilfen at the Boer and I, I still have customers from those beginning days, which really makes me feel good. And, uh, and now Spargarden is a powerhouse with, you know, the people that they have now. So I have, they have nothing the, to do they with have that. The, they have all. the great Jesse de la Garza here in Miami now, too. Yeah. Which yeah, is, uh, yeah, true. Very true. experienced, knowledgeable man to have on the team here in Miami. Sounds like nice a guy player. too. Yeah. Does sound like a baseball player. I met Jesse for the first time when I was in a bouquet company. My bouquet company in New York. He used to grow Alstroemeria in California. I used to buy it from him. Yeah, and then we found each other again. I could see him as a Californian. He looks like he's from California. <laughs> Marco, so I want to know, Marco. Do you, did you say you still handling accounts? Are you still doing sales as well? Right now. Yeah, I, I do, I do, I do, and not as many as I used to. And and I, you know, I overlook more to make sure that you know the customers are really taken care of. That the ones that I know, but there's so many people that came to us that over the years that I really don't really know anymore personally. Um, yeah, but listen, I I have a really really experienced sales team that um, or account managers team, however you want to call it. But you know they. Uh, uh, the accounts that I still have, usually I do it jointly with somebody in my team. Then if I'm traveling or I'm not there, then we can uh, then I can hand it over quite easily. Yeah, that's awesome. That is really awesome. So, what other positions did you hold? Because I mean, you're CEO now. You're still selling. I think that's fantastic. But what other positions did you hold? Go, you know, as you continue to mature in your career. Yeah, that was kind of it, to be honest. It was like I a think it's wow. important. I think it's important if Fuck in the yeah. flower business, if you're a leader of, or like CEO or a, a, you know a leader of 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 a team, um, you have to be connected. Yeah, you got to know what's going on. You gotta you gotta hold on to a couple of accounts. You gotta do a couple of buy-in things. You got there's things that you gotta do to keep connected. If you don't do that, you keep your and you don't have the pulse of what's going on. You could lose a lot of money. Well, and I think for leadership. I think every single role is important to understand, but the sales has the connection with the clients. So you have that connect, so you understand the needs, you understand the services, you kind of understand a lot of it. So sales is very important. It's your direct line to the client. Correct. And that, you know, if you do not have that direct line, it's easy. Like Mike said, once your finger's off the pulse, mm -hmm. you're making decisions that don't, that maybe worked at one right. time, but don't work with what's currently going on in the industry. Right. And everything's always evolving. So it's like undercover boss. That's why I always mm -hmm. want a salesperson <laughs> yeah. to buy something. Right. If a salesperson is buying something, then they understand what's what more than a person than a salesperson who's really not buying too anything or doesn't have the connections to at least one. But it's fun too, eh? It's fun too. Uh, yeah. besides the 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 the, the like you say, Mac, it's so true. You have to have, you have to know the pulse of the company, the pulse of the, of the clientele, the pulse of the market in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I have to say, it's fun too because you know, with with most clients, the relationship is always fun. And um, yeah. you have the cleanest, uh, and yeah, I can only be grateful that this guy. Us. I know, Marco. Did <laughs> what you is hear that? Me? I said you. I don't know if you cleaned it up just for the video. Or you have the neatest, cleanest desk of any flower yeah. company. For our listeners, it's sparkling. Like there's it's, so many. There's so much space perfect. for 
for post it notes. It's, maybe if he moves the camera, yeah. you'll see the real the real mess. He's we'll like, I'm you, perfectly we'll placed. We'll send you pictures of Fern's desk what, after. What that is? No, yeah, no, no, no. Right. What that is? That's the space for the bread and the croissants and everything he's getting from the bakery. <laughs> yeah. Did we skip? I don't know if we, we said the skipped, no, we skipped that. We skipped over that. He works above a bakery. Yeah, there's yeah. no crumbs His there. There's no crumbs. His office is above he's a bakery. Highly caffeinated. Yeah, look. <laughs> I just saw chocolate chip filled, cookie filled croissants. Have you seen these? Yes. I don't want to see them. They, yeah. They're mixing croissants and cookies, and it looks it's amazing. Wow. Marco, this is two oh. fat guys talking flowers, but really we have to always talk about food. That's right. Uh. <laughs> of course, of course, of course. But hold on, hold on. You guys need to change their name because you guys are not a two skinny guys. Yeah. Come on. We're working on it. They got, not, they Mike's, got, Mike's they, kicking really? out like two... Talking hey, flowers. Yeah. Hey, hey, now I like that. No, we're gonna put an X over fat, and that's it. Yeah, but you guys got extra yes. baggage. You got me. You got three you X's. Know. <laughs> we're gonna put three X's over it. We'll always be the two fat guys. Always. So, do you have like a standing order? Is there like a you know you walk in and they hand you a coffee in a bag like right away like it's already known Marco's <laughs> here by seven. We need his. It's coffee. probably on his desk waiting for him. That is my favorite moment of the day. When I so I get out of my car, I open the mailbox, I walk upstairs, I turn on the light, I walk downstairs again, I walk in the, into the coffee shop, and they have my coffee ready. And I got a large oh, black coffee, yeah. and it's good morning, Marco. Good morning, and then yeah, I love it. That's if, that's if, the, 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 the. If I can make a suggestion, uh, when I worked in the old warehouse in the old office, I had a little basket in a window <laughs> on a rope, and I would put the rope down the window, and it'd have a bell on it, and when they would put oh snacks, and I would God. ring the bell, and then I pulled the rope back up because I was on the second floor. So it really that might, was the greatest thing. He'd get that's how he'd get his lunch delivered. <laughs> Lunch would show up and the guy would deliver to the front to the little office and then all of a sudden the bell would ring and it was the like thing, Rapunzel the pulley, it in was my tower. So great. So I would. But that's that. what I mean with you guys. So original your ideas. <laughs> like, and and the amazing thing is you guys just do it. <laughs> that's the other thing you can come up with it, but yeah. actually doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike would have had to install like a post office chute, you know, like Ooh, suction that's power. That's next level, yeah. Like a, a little thing that goes down, and every time it went down, they knew to give him a fresh coffee. Do you Mike think you could fit in. a sub sandwich in those post office ones or at the bank? Yes, you can. Yeah, okay. I know I for a fact. <laughs> oh, the suction Whoa. tube? Yeah. No, my Hold friend, on, how my do you friend, know? My friend that's used how to work Costco at, drops the money. That's what I'm saying. My friend yeah. used to work at Wachovia. Mm -hmm. Like remember when first union that bought when they became Wachovia now as Wells Fargo. So I used to go and visit her and she would tell me she's like she would get in trouble when I would visit her. So I would go, OK, fine. If I go and I deposit money and I tried putting everything in those things and I knew exactly <laughs> like, you know, like whatever. And then like, I would brownies, put them up there, you know, and I know that a sub from sub rages fit inside it. So that's, funny. that's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> Here are your nachos. So, Marco, <laughs> I, I'm curious to hear from you. And I'm sure whoever listens is also very curious to hear it. Where do you see the industry right now? And where post COVID and, and, and we all, you know, obviously we all went through hell and then things got great, but I like to hear like, what is your forecast? What, what is, what do you, where do you see our industry I, as very, far as supply yeah, chain very, go? Yeah. Now, I'm very optimistic, and I'll tell you why, but just to go back to COVID for one second, uh, I remember you and I having phone conversations, both working from home, both um, headaches from the stress. You know, I, I mean, quarantined listen. myself, and I got COVID anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that? <laughs> no, I don't know that. I stayed me. home he for was weeks. so mad. He You're such a so popular mad. guy. That I virus stayed home, home for weeks. <laughs> I mean... Somebody who didn't really believe in it was hanging out with you. So yeah, Mike Junior. He brought it to <laughs> me. <laughs> Shit head. He was so bad. <coughs> cool, yeah. No, but what 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 COVID did for our industry, and I'm sure you guys had it earlier on in the podcast uh, uh, during the years. But what COVID really it really helped our industry. And yes, we went through hell. There is no doubt about it. Like, and I'm still feeling it sometimes. But um, we went through hell as an industry. But it also helped us. Um, if, you, if you look at, for example, the supply chain, the supply chain crumbled during uh, COVID. We all know that, right? And 
um, the fact that we tried, you guys also, like, I don't think you ever closed. You closed, but you didn't really close. Like, we didn't close either. We still, every day, we were still shipping wherever we could. Not a lot, but whatever we could, we did. And 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 what I saw with customers and still see is that they, the supply chain became, the logistical part of the supply chain came, became uh, more transparent. And the customers started to understand more the difficulties that we have, but that they never felt. So before COVID, just a simple uh, uh, ex uh, example, before COVID, one day delay, they wanted to kill themselves. You know, they wanted like, oh, no, no. Yeah. And right now it's like, oh, you know, whatever. Like, now you know, they budget for it. Day. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So. And so do I we. I think that that part helped. But I think the second part that helped is. You know, in the industry, e-commerce uh, uh, became really big during COVID. And e-commerce, you know, yes, it competes with the brick and mortar store. Yes, it competes with, you know, the traditional flower store. But what it also does is, you know, what happened in, in, in Great Britain, early 80s, no, late 80s, when the supermarkets started to sell flowers, all of the flower stores were like, you know, screaming. But it ended up being better because the more flowers are reaching people, the more it becomes, you know, the demand becomes bigger and bigger and bigger um, over time. And this is what I believe happened during COVID. I believe people were now used to yes. gifting flowers. And, and I see it continue. Will it be as good as 2022? I don't think so. Although, although this year so far has been pretty, pretty equal to 2022. Last don't year you, was a little less. Don't you less. think during COVID, the supermarket became the new wholesaler in some respects? Yes, yes, but I will say that uh, um, I don't know how long that will last. I, I heard an interesting perspective about that uh, from from my buddy Thomas. He said, um, you know, supermarkets right now, yes, big factor in flowers, big, 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 and it will always be like that. Will it continue to grow? I'm not sure about that. And his insight was, and I and I tend to agree with that. His insight was, young people, Ryan and younger. They, you know, they order their groceries online, right? And the impulse buy of going into a Trader Joe's, or well, Trader Joe's maybe not the best example, or of going into a food line or whatever, you walk in and you grab your flowers, that impulse over the next couple of, you know, maybe decade would be less because people will go less into the supermarket and get the groceries towards them. So I still believe that e-commerce and brick and mortar stores are having a good future uh, and i and i believe that supermarkets will have to get on board with that as well uh, at the e-commerce part because the impulse buy will be challenging in you know five six seven maybe ten years there's also there's also the, mm -hmm. there's also the trend of um you know like butchers popping up like getting your specialized items in certain there's a little bit more respect in the chain in the sense that like there's more fish stores, you know, people want to buy directly from like, you know, the what's the, the they, it's they want to buy from the, the special. Source yeah, the but, but so they'd rather buy from the bakery under Marco's office than they would in the absolutely. local stop like, and shop. bakery. I, I'm more likely. Right? Yes. I'm Is more that likely. your supermarket stop and shop over there? Food, food lion. Yes. Food lions in yes. the Carolinas. Oh, yeah, yeah. Stop and shop is right here around Stop the corner. But you're right. That's a good example. Stop and you shop go to... was not nice to me. Well, that's just so you know. They're on the now, right? I boycotted Stop and Shop <laughs> <laughs> because there used to be that's a, a there that's a Dutch company, also, right? Yes, Stop. there was a super. I used to service the uh, Mel White's Food Towns in in Long Island for years. They were my anchor account when I was a bouquet maker and. uh this stop and shop, they bought them. And the next morning, they cut me. The next morning. The lady's name was Sandy. I forget her last name, but she was not very nice. You're dead to me, Sandy. She is. If you're listening, you're dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back 25 years ago. But anyway, they cut me. And then they called me like two days later. Oh, we might have been a little bit too quick to get rid of you. Would you mind, uh, would you mind uh, uh, bridging the gap for us until we can organize it better and do it ourselves? I was like, no, go fuck yourself. I'm not doing anything for you. You're dead to me. Do you think if yeah. somebody named Sandy called you and like pretended, you would fall for it? 
Anybody who's been around for a long time and knows about Stop and Shop and this lady Sandy, they know what I'm talking about. Because <laughs> she wasn't nice with many people, from what I understand. Well, in supermarket, buyers, I wasn't alone. They they kind of stay there for a long time. They can retire, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But not anymore. You know what would be funny? That was the beginning if to I the end say, of the Sandy, regional. Sandy, come on over here. There's right. Somebody else <laughs> to talk to you. Special guest, Sandy. Sandy, no, but... you're dead to us. The acquisitions of the supermarkets in the 90s mm-hmm. um, was bad for the regional bouquet makers because your relationships were gone in seconds yeah. and you had to go corporate. Like I used to have to drive to, I used to do Giant of Carlisle, Pennsylvania. They bought them well, out too. Stop shopping is, is Giant too. Yeah, I know. And Food Lion. <laughs> they fucked yeah. me real good. I remember. Yeah. Don't I don't remind me. You. Food Lion, dead All to Hold, us. Stop and Shop. Yeah, they, bo- they bought everybody around me. Yeah. yeah. They were not very nice. So, yeah, do yourself a favor. Boycott Stop and Shop. <laughs> go to the bakery. Next time, go, next time you go to, go to the Stop butcher. and Shop. Yeah. Next time you t- get to a Stop and Shop, take a selfie and send it. To Don't you got any <laughs> shop rights up there? You got any shop rights around you? Yeah, That's absolutely. your spot, man. Hang out with the shop right. Forget about Stop and That's Shop. That's it. Shop right's That's the way it. to go. Those are, those are much uh, more loyal people. But you know what's also another another point, like to to your question, uh, uh, like where do you see the uh, uh, the industry going? The change that we've also seen in the last maybe I don't know four years, five years, is that you know social media. Obviously, listen, it, what you guys are doing is uh, you're way ahead of the game always. But as social media is growing more and more and more, um, and and reaching more people, we see now that also the brick and mortar stores in, and I'm just going to say something like in Mississippi or in the middle of Oklahoma, or, you know, they reach out and all of a sudden they also are inspired to get a vendor, which, you know, 10 years would never happen. Yeah, we can sell vendors in Chicago and in New York and in Dallas and in Miami. Yes, but we, we had a hard time selling that in the middle of nowhere. And, and still, it's not the predominantly what we do, but we see definitely that the influence of the designs and what people use in our industry is going up. Yeah. Which is a great Agreed. thing. That's probably your main, your new customer is a lot of that. Yeah. Like your, your average new customer for us. It's people in the middle of nowhere. That looking, found us. looking that they're tired. They want a new assortment. Yeah. Get. Something new and different. Mm-hmm. You know, either it's they're not pom poms and carnations anymore. Right. It's, you know, although carnations are the number one, but, underrated but it's so hard when you have that you have that reach in social media to get to so many people and then you you can't help them you know what i mean so that's it that that's a little frustrating i would say but it is cool yeah, but that's, that, that they're looking so that's kind of things. cool to see like that 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 our audience is growing so to speak yeah definitely love that marco tell us a little bit bad tell us some Tell us a little bit of bad that you faced either recently or growing or, you know, as you were growing in the industry. You said bad? Yeah, bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's not so oh. much bad. It's flowers. I haven't it's thought about that. It's a lot of good. Or tell, us, a or tell good. us your worst floral story. Oh, my God. I have so I have so many. But I, <laughs> then I have to name names. And trust me. <laughs> What's the one that keeps you up at night, right? He's like, who am I throwing into the bus? Who is your Sandy? Who is your Sandy? What's the one that haunts you? (laughs) Oh, there's this woman from Stop and Shop. (laughs) (laughs) No. Listen, listen. I I have many stories, and one day maybe we have to write a book, but maybe we have to do it together. But, no, I I had people offering me to to, to, to kill people if, uh, you know, if they don't pay their money in time and things. And this just goes all back to like the 90s. But anyway, like things definitely have changed. The uh, the uh, the craziness is a little bit out of it. You know what I mean? Like it's uh, it's more now, and not corporate in, in any way, but it is more now leveled. Like, you know, our customers are leveled. You know, I'm definitely leveled uh, uh, compared to uh, those times. It's it's different. And And the same thing if you go to Holland, it's also different. If you go to the auction, it's not there anymore. I saw on one of your Facebook posts that uh, Pinky, is that his name? Pinky? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Pinky's going to Holland to learn, you know, about, which is cool, but he, and he will have an experience that nobody has in the industry. It's great that you guys do this, 
but it will be a different experience than Ryan had. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I mean, you've been to Holland too, right? Uh, uh, not, working not, there. not that way. I've been, but just like a quick little, little stop in Amsterdam. Yeah, but it it's changed yeah. completely. He didn't go for like. I didn't go for the. He crash didn't go for course. a boot yeah. camp. Yeah, exactly. In in the time that I was at Chrysler, I went the first year that I was at Chrysler when I went to the auction, and within five years, it changed completely. It was it's a it yeah. was a quick change. Like it, 2011, it was a t- totally different place. There was nobody there. Pinky went for a week. It used to a week at Easy Flowers. I remember, and then he went for a week. On a flying Dutchman truck, mm-hmm. and then he went for a week working at a cash and carry. But, but, but that that experience that, that he you almost, gave he said him, he thought he almost died on the flying Dutchman. He the hours and the work was crazy. I mean, just watching him and Natalie set up the cash and carry and their logic behind everything. The other day, we, I was out there like during Mother's Day with them, and and it makes so much sense. And that's something that you've gifted him forever for it, that education is it was, that's right is incredible, and I mean it benefits all of us. Knowledge is power. The more you know. There's a lot of repressed yeah. flower salespeople out here. Like the bosses don't send them to farms. They, they, they don't they don't attend shows. They don't go it's all mistakes. Like these people need to be enriched with knowledge. They gotta the person on the other side of the phone doesn't want to buy from somebody and know what they don't know what they're talking about. We had that conversation where I gave you the example about the car dealer. Remember the other day we had the meeting? Yeah. So, Mark, we had a meeting the other day, and I wanted to explain that if you want to sell something, you need to know what the hell you're talking about. And we've all gone to buy a new car, right? If you get a sales guy that doesn't know how that car works and doesn't explain it to you in great detail other than just tell you the price and the color, you probably won't buy that car from that guy. You want to buy a car from somebody who knows what the hell they're talking about. And they want to explain it to you. This is how the radio works. This is how the windows go up and down. This is how the AC works. Like the, the chairs, this is how, like I bought cars from real people that had zero training and walked out. My son, Jared used to sell That's cars. True. Jared used to sell cars and he was like 18, 19 years old. And he was outselling guys with years of experience because when the when they would have these like uh, training sessions, he would pay attention and he would take notes and he would explain the car so much that you just felt like, wow, that, that this is the car for me. Or was it just in his blood? He was just good at it. Yeah. Maybe that too. He's he's got the gift. Of <laughs> it's a little that. bit Maybe of that yeah, too. No, does. but it's it's it but takes he was the out education. Selling. It takes right. the education. And you said you like we saw that TikTok the other day about the the kid who keeps winning the. Um, the sales, of, yeah, and and it, and it's 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 knowledge. It's the drive, and and he w- learns about the car before he sells it. So yeah, it's knowledge. So th- that's why I think those things are important, but, especially when you see like knowledge. a diamond in the rough. Somebody who's got real has has that talent. They just need to be nurtured and taught. Those people you could spot them, and and those are the ones that you really want to invest into. Uh, you're absolutely right, and that's 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 right away the biggest problem that we face. But I know that everybody in the industry, I'm sure you guys have the same thing. Like it's so hard to find good people that grow up, grew up in this industry, and understands. There's so much to to learn, right? If you take if you take somebody in a position at our company, they work from home, so there's nobody really, you know, next next sitting next to them and you know guiding them. But besides that, you have to know the seasonality of things. You have to know the pricing of things. You have to know where it comes from, how it gets from there to the customer. All of that. My experience is it takes about a year to a year and a half before a new account manager really, really knows enough. Not even well, just enough. So it's 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 a very difficult to find good new people and i uh we're constantly on the lookout but it's hard there's more flowers to sell than there are than there are people to sell it unfortunately absolutely you know unfortunately and you're right the onboarding process and learning all the flowers and everything it's almost a lifetime's worth of knowledge that you're trying to cram into somebody i mean you guys are sending you know flowers from the motherland holland all the way over across the country i mean that takes a lot it takes a lot of learning yeah, yeah, it does. And I, uh, 
I thought about maybe setting up a program with, you know, with more wholesalers. Um, so not just our company, but just to, you know, have a course for people to say, listen, if you're interested, here's three months, like, you know, you know, Pete from this company and Sarah from that company are going to speak and, you know, whatever it is. And then we have a bigger pool of people and then we can say, okay, make them an offer. Whatever. Again, it's just a little idea, but something has to happen in order to, to create the next generation. And, you know, the 25 year olds are very hard to find, very hard to find. Um, and, and, and one of our managers uh, of the Chicago branch for, uh, for Fleur Metz, he, uh, he always puts it the right way. He says, it's a uh, blue collar industry with a white collar pay, if you're good. But that's exactly what it is. It's a blue collar industry. You have to want that. You know, I happen to love, love that. That's part of why I'm, you know, doing what I do. I grew up in it. But if you, if you go to college and, and you, you know, you, you want to work at a bank, and all of a sudden, that job is not there. Do you want to go to selling flowers? I don't know. But there is a career in it. That I do know. Mm -hmm. And there's a fun career, too. There's traveling. There is, I think it's a very exciting world, uh, the world that we're in. I really do. You just got to change the lingo to not hire salespeople. You got to hire influencers. And that's, that's, the, that's how you get the 25-year-olds. Mm -hmm. Everybody uh, yeah, wants point. to be an influencer. My daughter and son included. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, uh, very recognizable. But that's a good point. Maybe we have to change the lingo and make it a little bit more up to date and sexier. There you go. Is there anything uh, you wanted to talk about that we didn't touch on, Marco? No, no, no. I think this is good. Is there anything we want uh, his last step, his last episode in the house before you any last thoughts before you head up onto the cabin? You people are going to miss me. Oh. That's all I know. <laughs> that's that's our thoughts. What it's are... not just you. It's mommy and Sid, and you know now I have to have to buy uh, snacks for the office. And it's Everybody's hard. going on a diet. Everyone's going to lose some weight. Everyone hits the summer diet. Bod. Summer bod. Hot girl summers. Yeah. We put our time in. We just passed my forty fifth Mother's Day. Damn. Really, forty five? Mm -hmm. Holy shit. No, you go and enjoy. You enjoy. Fine. So, buy the snacks. <laughs> Just come, but, but come, but come <laughs> back every once in a while. <laughs> He's going to. He's got to. All mommy the shows are in Florida. In all the shows are in Florida. Sense, yeah, sense I'm traveling it. once a month. I'll be traveling at least once a month. So I'll be stopping by. You never know when I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> we have an air tag on you. We know. <laughs> <laughs> I want to just say that I'm really happy that we have Marco on the podcast. I'm a personal fan. I think he's an amazing leader. I have talked to people that have worked for him. I know all about him, even things that he don't talk about, I know. And I'm a fan. I'm a big fan. And uh, Like uh, what? I just, I, I, I've told him this before, and I'll say it again. I wish we could do more together because I really... Yeah. I'm a fan. I really well, believe in what you're doing. I think what Marco said about a book or, or c combining with like education is really good because I think both of you could share so much. So, yeah, mm. I do think that there needs to be an easier way to get information on about the industry. You know, it's the hidden gem. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, yeah. I know Seed Your Future and everybody's trying. Yeah, but I think but... that there has to be a way to explain exactly that important things seasonality like well willie w willie was on and 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 he has the book that's coming out and that's great for history but now once you get past that like there needs to be like a a, f a flower industry 101 like what makes it like you what kind of jobs you can get how can you um you know hone in this is like an industry but it's also a hobby everybody here has a thousand pictures of flowers on their phone i mean we 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 had that awesome game on the on instagram where you guys were all tested on your knowledge of flowers it's forever perpetual learning you know so it's important that you know as a, if you're as, a spaz in sports you could really like me i'm a spaz in sports i could not i was the last guy to get picked for anything sports wise me too no. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I've got a question. A lot of sports spazzes are doing really well in the flower business. What spaz? Spaz? No, no you uh, did not just ask. No, this I is am. what he's not twenty five. You know, <laughs> twenty four. 
You never saw I The Sandlot? What did he ask? He, he asked, asked what Spaz was. Spaz. Did you watch the movie The Sandlot? When I was a kid. Of course not. No, I did. You did? When then you know what Spaz is. What happened in The Spaz. Sandlot? What was The Sandlot about? We have this ongoing joke. Joel doesn't know, watch I, I movies. Holes. He only, you see? Uh, <laughs> he he only watches not. YouTube. <laughs> in The Sandlot, the one with the baseball at the... That generation, Mimi. I've seen both. I just don't remember. So how would you describe it? A Can spaz. you give me a Somebody like a spaz? A, like a scrub? Someone who can't hit the ball, someone who can't get a basket, someone who can't the last person picked. The last person picked. The last, person, picked. Picked. The last I asked person that before. Yeah. Like, ah, oh, shit, Somebody... man, I gotta have Joel on my team. Oh man. That's usually the spaz. <laughs> Somebody yeah. who runs like a chicken. Yeah. There we go. That's what I was told all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I saw the funniest thing. It was this meme and it was all these uh girls of a specific color and they was like follow me to my uh to my wedding and they were attempting to do dances and then the girl at the end oh just made the funniest moves and somebody in the comments internet's never defeated somebody in the comments goes this girl at the end just said hot dog hot dog hot diggity dog it was to a beyonce song i remember that trend it was horrible people kept trying to redo it and yeah it was bad. Yeah. It was pretty bad. By the way, did you guys see that uh, Puff Daddy got caught uh, beating oh up somebody? Oh, my gosh. That's, I yeah. can't well, even talk about it. Now he's very remorseful. Yeah. And yeah. he, the one person that he should have apologized to, he didn't apologize to on yeah. there because he just talked about himself. What do you mean? He never said her name. Or he nothing. never said her name. He, he never, never acknowledged. Personally yeah. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. It's a yeah. She put out apology. a statement that he just apologized. He was sorry. just doing the, this for himself. Th- this whole... Um, yeah, domestic violence is one of those things that really irks me. When I was in my women's club, October is that month, and I just don't understand. It's just, yeah. Anyways. That is severity of what he did was like, and this is just caught on camera one time. Can you imagine what happened behind exactly. closed doors? Exactly. There's got to be exactly. more. Exactly. Yeah, there's got to be more. There, there was over the, the there was over like 15 people in that lawsuit. So, I mean, yeah. These are just the people that are willing to come forward. I'm sure there's others. One hundred percent. That yeah. won't. That just want to keep it quiet and whatnot. But or, I will tell or, you, I saw that video and I my blood was boiling. Like I can't. Yeah, disgusting. Just ugh. this guy ruined my childhood. You know, I wanted exactly. to be in a space suit. No, now I can't say I'm bad boy for I life. Can't I can't even sing his songs. <laughs> I can't even sing his songs I used anymore. To call me P Diddy as a kid. Well, you're not going to be anything like that, man. Sorry. Your mother. We got to cancel him. Cancel him. That's it. Definitely well, cancel. Well, I did say something. I said something like, uh, I don't know who it was. Somebody was asking me about, oh, do you listen to this? I go, wait, are they going to get canceled next week? Because I'll tell you my real my real opinion. No, it's craziness. Oh. Insane. Anyways. Insane. Let's talk about that. No, no, listen, Mike. Same thing. I'm a big fan of your guys. And uh, maybe we should go. Maybe we should call Bravo. Bravo. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think if they put a live camera in your sales office, <laughs> oh my God, I think that would create some content. And he knows, he knows your network too. He knows your favorite network. <laughs> I don't know if yeah, I'm, 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 I'm I just watched the, uh, the new... Uh, Vanderpump? Is that I'll the one you watched? No, but uh, selling... selling uh... The one, the Valley... Oh. I just thought my daughter-in-law Michelle told me I should watch The Valley, <laughs> and you? she was right. It's better than the Vanderpump. Have you heard about Milf Manor? No. It's, oh. it's, <laughs> is that on Bravo? Marco. It's on one of these channels. Milf e Manor. Bravo. That is such a bad show. Marco, you, I saw the you commercial. Know what I'm about? I saw the commercial Ryan for that, and I almost peed that my pants his, laughing. His it's network. so funny. They had <laughs> young kids dating old milfs, right, in a house. And then they look at brought Joel, in. Look at Joel's then face. they brought in like your college roommate. Yeah, and then they brought in the kids' dads to like mingle with them to like compete <laughs> against the kids for the. Oh, I'm gonna mom. Google that tonight. I want to. Oh, watch. it's great. It's really funny. Ryan's college roommate was doing that. Oh yeah, he was a. Uh... He was getting paid to go meet... on dates with milfs. Yeah, he wasn't... Well, I don't know if he's getting paid. But oh, he was like keeping score for himself. He was. He had a tally. He gave There's a girl a, re- a certificate on number on a certain number. Oh like, my goodness! Okay, like congratulations. He, <laughs> said he thought it was a it was a proud moment. You for know, her. the greatest thing I ever heard What's was when I heard that A Rod <laughs> yeah. gave away baskets when he was. You know, know. Yeah, it's, it's, that's it's, the greatest thing I I've know. Ever, people who never got did. some. Mm-hmm, it's real, like right. a real situation. Oh yeah, this guy was strong. He used to take those big giant ch- tires and drag them across the field. Right, I remember that kid. Yeah, he was a juice head. 
too sick. By the way, milfs are have there's like a resurgence because of the Anne they Hathaway. never went away. <laughs> yeah, I, when did they go away? <laughs> they never I, went out not of once since I heard it. Anyway, there's have a, they ever let's gone away? Back let's go track. back to flowers. <laughs> so we're gonna ask you some questions. It's a rapid fire, Ryan. This is your gig. Let's go. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah. The, <laughs> all right, quick. What is your favorite flower? Butterfly ranunculus. What is the best sandwich? I'm a simple guy. A ba- uh, 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 toasted bagel with tuna. Wait, wait. Do you take the crotch out of the bagel, or is yeah, it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah me <laughs> too. To I'm with you on that, that, brother. That's crotchless bagels. The better question is, how does he make his tuna fish? Because everybody makes it differently. Oh yeah, do you put apples in yours? No apples, but mayonnaise. A lot of mayonnaise. Oh no, you got to try. The Hungarian style. You got to chop up some celery, apples. I do celery, but not apples. Trust me. But it has to be green or red. Either anything. It needs to be a red. sweet apple. Okay. And you chop it up, and with On celery, it. and maybe if you're into onion, a little I bit do of onions. Red, red onion. And you and you put lemon. Red or- onion, a little bit of lemon pepper. Okay, yeah. I lemon like pepper, and trust me. You cut, take out the crotch of the bagel and you stuff the tuna is inside. That the really, the, is that the terminology for that's it? That's the you, it's crotch. <laughs> that's how we say the it. The knowledge you. this man has about everything is just amazing. Well, look, tuna <laughs> fish help make me tuna fish on a bagel help make me the man I am today. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, what is the most overrated flower? Gladiolus. What about the most underrated? Um, Gloriosa. Mm. What is your go-to way to relax? Boating. You say boating or bowling? Uh, boating, boating yeah, on the lake. That's huge in Connecticut. Yeah, yeah. boats yeah. and hose. What <laughs> lake? Are you, what lake are you boating on in Connecticut? Cranberry, cran, uh, Cranwall. What's we have name? Lake. Uh, um, oh, the name escaped me now, but uh, oh, Kendallwood Lake. Kendallwood Kendall Lake. Lake. Right. I know that lake. That's Mike, a, Mike's nice on one. Trout Lake. It's a good lake. Solid lake. No, no <laughs> trout. trout a lot no smaller. trout in the lake, but there's no, Trout that, Lake. That, that, our lake's a lot smaller than that lake. That I just like to nice. cruise just a little, like have a good music on. Like that's that's the thing that empties your head. Even in October, when the, you know the weather's a little cold, doesn't matter. Yeah. Put a jacket on yep. and just. You guys are two peas in a pod. I like yes, this. Yes, we are. Okay, what uh, what if you had a superpower? What would your superpower be? Predicting the, uh, the the Powerball lottery. Mm. <laughs> Smart. Um, scariest. So what is the scariest animal? A snake. Absolutely. You guys have a lot of those, right? Yes. They, they I know a lot of snakes. <laughs> oh, they, Miami, yeah. they work in Stop They're Your Shop. All... <laughs> Sandy, you're Sandy. dead to me. Sandy, Sandy the snake. Slithery <laughs> snake. I love that video. <laughs> Uh, oh, the new one. What did? Yeah. What is your go-to drunk food? Um, it's not food. It's a sweet licorice, black licorice. That's the oh. only thing from Holland that is. Oh come on! Come on! <laughs> you guys. That makes come sense. On. Of course, you have to be drunk to enjoy that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This guy's from the auction. He's used to eating herring in the morning. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, true. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Mess with 5 the a.m. herring. That's true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I throw up at the smell of it, but Your hey. brother Jared likes licorice, too. You know, the, I hear this quote now, don't, don't, don't yuck my yum. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but they, don't make fun of what sorry, I Sorry, like. we're sorry. We apologize. We apologize. Oh, I got to be right. really wasted we go. to enjoy that. No fun. Especially the black one. Yeah. yeah. Like Twizzlers are great. Oh, Twizzlers! Yeah. Twizzlers are the bomb. Yeah, you know it's okay, but the real black stuff, I like, guess. It's, <laughs> it's oh my, Marco! If someone wants to reach out, they want to get in contact. They want to yell at you. I am Groot. I am um, Groot. How do they get in contact with you? Um, just my email m dot groot at hilfo dot com. Uh, no way I'm anybody's over selling social. that. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. We'll put that in the notes. <laughs> what I mean, so I, I am so know. honored. I'm so honored to be on your guys' podcast. But I was thinking, like, what does a guy have to do to get invited, right? Oh. So you guys did like your hundredth podcast, and I thought like the only thing to get noticed is just bring a big bottle of champagne 
So I drove by you guys. I dropped it off. Two weeks later, do you want to be on the podcast? I thought, yes. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Bribery yes. always seems to work. I can't. I don't we know like why. Sh- we like champagne here. We're a, a size scotch or champagne either way. <laughs> yeah. We'll work for food. Yeah. They prefer the Glenn Levitt uh, 24-year-old. No, my No, we can't make them do no, that. No, no, just, no. Just Re- Glenn any, any Glenn Levitt. 18-year-old yeah. is yeah. really well. But he yeah. made it. He's on. He's on. He's here. <laughs> I'm on. That's it. You, you guys know, are getting finally. licorice from here on out. <laughs> Worth it. Worth it. <laughs> Marco, could you suggest a guest for us to have uh, in the future on the podcast? Yeah, I... Uh, uh... Maybe uh, Thomas uh, Maloney. I know you guys know him. Oh, he's yeah. from yeah. Economia. Yeah. yeah, he would be an interesting guy. He's he's a couple of generations younger than I am, and his his view of the industry and the world, you know, itself is uh, you know, is is different and 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 interesting. There you go. Definitely, we'll write him. Tommy down. is a very very in tune, very smart man, mm-hmm. and he's also getting married or got married to. Uh... He's getting married in Ecuador. He's moving. July He's moving 6th. to Ecuador, right? Yeah, that's where he lives now. Yeah. Yeah. It's always after a girl. That's mm-hmm. how I got. That's how I got stuck in the flowers. It's the girl. <laughs> all right. Good. No more questions. Did we hit them all? Yeah. No. Oh, Just man. thank you very much for. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Marco. Yeah, thank you guys. It's so good to see you all. You as well. Can you please yeah. email us uh, your mailing address so we can send you your guest gift? Sure. Don't make it anything uh, crazy, okay? <laughs> He's no worried. Promises. He's worried. We're going to send you a case no of black promises. licorice. I was going to say black licorice, probably. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of Two Fat Guys Talking Flowers, where we're always going to give you the good, the bad, the ugly about flowers. Joel, Ryan, Mimi in the house. Mike is leaving us. He's going north. <laughs> Our awesome guest, Marco Groot. I am Groot. Thank you for joining us. Thank you guys for listening. And Sandy, you're dead to me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>